Hello everyone and welcome to WGBS TV Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. In this our, or my name is Steve Eunice, in this our April 9th, 2019 show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including the supposed cameo of Superman in the Shazam movie, we're going to be talking about, or oh, what else, uh, some fan film news, some news about uh, Alice and Mac, which is not very good. And we're going to be talking about a lot, lot more. We'll also be turning to you to take your questions and comments on any particular Superman topic you would like to discuss. And to let you know how all that works and how you can get involved in tonight's show, let me introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Hey, Mike. Hey, Steve. Now, obviously, everybody watching this right now on YouTube, it, I screwed that up. I was trying to do it off the cuff tonight, and I'm going to go back <laughs> to the script. Because, obviously... Um, I can't remember anything. Now, since WGBS Live is all about Superman, we want to hear from Superman fans from all over the world, especially the ones watching us on YouTube right now. So around the halfway mark, and if we don't have too much going on and we can figure out the technology, we will start taking your calls. To do this, you'll need Skype. Open up Skype, look for Superman homepage, message us, wait for us to respond, and if we have time, we'll get you on the show. Uh, a couple different things on there. Wait for, uh, please message us first because that can screw things up. Also, if you do get on the show, it's important that you turn off any external speakers because we are on a delay and that sounds bad. Mm, indeed, we uh, don't want that echo happening if you do get to be part of tonight's show. Well, Mike, uh, I'm here in Heroes Park. Um, it's Getting a little bit cool, so I've got a jacket on today. Uh, what's the weather like in uh, your neck of the woods? Uh, starting to get hotter uh, because it's Georgia and, you know, spring. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's not too bad yet, but uh, we've been, we're, we're getting storms and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I'm glad that uh, they were able to clear up all the graffiti yeah. uh, off and of the statue put behind his head you. back on as well. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It is so impressive that you're able to do that. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, it's 2019, and I understand how special effects work, and I'm still like, he put a picture behind him. Look at that. <laughs> ah, very good. Well, let's get into our topics for tonight, and as we like to do, we start with movie news now. Uh, all along with uh, the Shazam film, there'd been lots of speculation about whether or not Henry Cavill would appear as Superman or whether Superman would appear in the movie because there is a heavy influence uh, on the characters from the uh, existing movies, especially Superman, with Billy Batson and his friends being uh, big Superman fans. And so we always wondered whether or not there would be a cameo there. Well, now that the movie's out, it's uh, no... Real surprise that to everyone to find out that yes, there is a Superman cameo just before the end credits, and it's not really Henry Cavill because we don't get to see who Superman's face is, we just get to see him from the chest down. And uh, Scotty V, who uh, has been missing from the website for a while now, uh, returned to post his description and thoughts on that cameo, and um, it uh. I haven't seen the film, neither of you, but I'm glad that there's something in there for Superman fans. Yeah, I I really wish... Well, no, I don't wish this. Uh, I was about to say I wish something, and I don't. Uh, over this past weekend, because Shazam was coming out, uh, somebody shared the last couple of pages from the Superman Shazam first Thunder miniseries. Right from like 2003, 2004, somewhere. It was right around the time that uh, it was written by Judd Winnick, and right around that same time, Winnick did like a three-part story that ran through the Superman books that kind of bridged the gap between Phase 1 and Phase 2 of Superstorm, uh, where she's, uh, Captain Marvel and Superman fight Eclipso with uh, really cool Aaron Churchill art. Uh, but somebody posted the last couple of pages, and... There is a part of me that really would have liked to have seen that put up on the screen because it's basically Superman figuring out that Shazam's a kid. Yeah. And he, he his first reaction is, who did this to you? And then he goes <laughs> and he is not taking any of the wizard's crap. 
And it's just like, and it just really would have been cool to see Henry Cavill yelling at Shazam going, what have you done? So, uh, but you know, at least Superman is referenced. Uh, I guess that that's something for us as fans. Yeah. And, uh, it's, you know, spoiler alert kind of thing. If you haven't seen it, uh, there is, you know, Superman holding a tray of food there and milk, uh, which is uh, interesting. Superman drinks milk, as we all know. But uh, just looking at the costume there, it's interesting that there's an update of the costume because there is red around the waist area uh, that hasn't been there in previous costumes. Yeah, I... I, I joked on, on Facebook the other day that the job that I uh, don't want at all uh, is um, to be the guy in charge of Superman merchandising art for like the past like six, seven years because <laughs> yes. they keep changing the costume. Uh, what I like about that red being there is my one issue with the costume from Man of Steel up through Justice League is that there's really nothing to break up the middle. They try to do like that silver look mm. uh, around the belt area, but it never quite popped. So if they're going to do like a kind of a red accent there, that looks a lot better uh, than what they had had. Uh, and I kind of wish they'd go back to the, the size of the S from Man of Steel too. But uh, I wonder if they hired the guy that was uh, the stand-in for Superman on Supergirl in the first season to do all that. That would have been... Uh, that would have been a good gig for him. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I heard that it was the stunt double for Shazam himself that uh, donned the costume. And I guess if you're already employing somebody to be a stunt double yeah. for one character who's you know buff, then it probably makes sense if you're not used to seeing his face to put him in the uh, the costume. And I like the fact that Superman, you know, has a huge influence and is an inspiration to Billy Batson and his friends, and that uh, you know he's. When I walk in at the end of this movie uh, is a big deal to the characters, so I think that it's 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 great. I mean, he should be the one that's uh, making cameos in other people's movies because he is the one that is, inspires them all. Yeah, uh, so now that we're finally there, <laughs> yeah. um, though theoretically we were told that Superman was an inspiration the entire time. I've I've pretty much, except for something I've got coming up on my own. Uh, I, I decided over the weekend that I am done uh, getting into discussions. And, maybe you know, if we talk about it here, we talk about it here because it's the show. Mm. But, like, on social media, I, I'm done with the whole arguing about what they did right and what they did wrong. I, I think it's time for everyone to just move on. Yeah, I agree. And maybe... Maybe Superman being in this is a sign that Warner Brothers has not completely given up on the character, and that when we finally get to the next sh to the next movie, uh, that they're not going to abandon everything, but they're just going to move on. Uh, the, sometimes when there's like kind of a bad run of a comic, the best thing uh, the next creative team can do is to just start doing their own stuff without overly trying to fix everything that the previous iteration got wrong. Mm. Uh, so maybe this is kind of a, a step in that direction because I did not see one single bad reaction to Shazam. Uh, and also another thing that I noticed is that it was, you know, it did not have a $300 million budget. It had like a 90 to $100 million. And it made all of its money back in the first weekend. Mm. So I think what that shows is that you can do really good action pieces, but you don't have to spend $300 million on the film and then another couple of hundred million on advertising, basically. Yeah, indeed. And I haven't. neither of us have seen Shazam, but uh, I know a lot of people who have, and a lot of the remarks have been uh, really interesting and, uh, and positive, even from people who were having seen the trailers, going, oh, this is too campy, this is too, you know, too much, you know, humor in it, you know, they should make it more serious like they have been doing, but having seen the film, they went, no, it was a perfect mix, it was just great, it was a lot of fun, and, you know, that's what you want from a superhero film, especially about a kid who becomes a superhero. Yeah, and that's, you know, I was not initially on board with what Johns did when he revamped the character, and the one thing that I read over and over again is that it, it goes with what Johns did in the comics, mm. but it's not as 
Billy's not as much of a jerk as he is in the books, uh, which I think is a good. I think that's a good direction to go in, and I'm glad it's doing well. I'm mm. glad you know everyone seems really happy with it, and I saw that the the writer has signed on to do the sequel. Yeah, and you know if we're if this is what if this is how Warner Brothers gets the their superhero film franchises up and running, uh, you know, great, great course correction. I'm I'm kind of glad. Yeah, indeed. And if you haven't read the article that Scotty V posted on our website about the Shazam cameo uh, scene, then uh, please head to our website to do that. All right, the only other movie news we have is a fan film which has been released. I saw this in Metropolis back in June uh, last year when uh, they'd been kind of taking this film out on the, on the circuit, doing de- different com- conventions and different film festivals. And now it's actually been released finally online. It's Superman World War. It's by DJC Films. Uh, it's uh, f- f- it's set in the 1940s, 19, March of 1945 to be exact, where Lois and Clark are assigned to the press corps in France near the end of World War II. And it's really well done. Uh, it's you know for his first major film, if you like, a feature-length film. Uh, Donald, uh, I think his name's Don, has done a, a fantastic job of um, of really, you know, putting what Superman is to him on film, and the casting is really, uh, really well done, and uh, you know the special effects for the budget they have is pretty impressive. So if you haven't seen it, uh, head to our website, check out Superman World War, uh, a fantastic fan film. And here's the, the promo trailer that they released recently for it. So, Superman World War, go check it out. It's out on our website now. Uh, have you had a chance to check it out, Michael? Uh, no, unfortunately, I have not. It's 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 crazy at work right now. So, uh, usually when I get home, I'm kind of like pass out in yeah, a chair. I can understand that. Or in front of the computer. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just over an hour long, so uh, it's but it's well worth sitting through, and um, it, uh, it's... Yeah, as I said, it's one of the better fan films that I've seen, so go check it out if you have a chance. It is on our website right now. So, uh, yeah, get to it. All right, well, on the TV side of things, Supergirl has not not had a new episode this week and will not have another new episode this coming Sunday. We'll have to wait until April 21st. But uh, we do have the description for the upcoming episode, which is titled Crime and Punishment. And we had a trailer for this already, but the description reads, Kara and Lena head to Strikers Island to search for clues on how to defeat Lex. At the prison, Kara tries to befriend a nosy prisoner, called Steve, who may have insight into what Lex was doing, while Lena studies an array of puzzles Lex left behind in the hopes of discovering his whereabouts. While there, a prison riot breaks out, and Kara must find a way to stop the prisoners without revealing her secret identity as Supergirl. Meanwhile, Kelly encourages James to talk to someone about uh, for his PTSD, and Alex faces off against Ben Lockwood after he storms the DEO and acquires some powerful weapons to hunt Supergirl. I am looking forward to the next episode. The um, last couple have been amazing, so it looks like they're going to finish the uh, the season strong. And... Uh, yeah, nothing, I don't think anybody's surprised about what's happening with James. Mm. Uh, it's interesting that Ben Lockwood can storm the DEO. I mean, what's with the security in that place? Well, considering he's like a government official now, maybe he has a, a better way to get in. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it does look dramatic, though, so... Yeah. Well, uh, to refresh your memory, here is the 
trailer that was released for this episode titled Crime and Punishment. People actually believe that I attacked the White House. I need people I can trust if you want me to bring her down. They better catch her. Supergirl is innocent. Where is Supergirl? <laughs> if the government wants to stop me from helping people, let them try. Supergirl. All new episodes return Sunday, April 21st on The CW. So there you have it. That was the trailer again. And uh, perhaps the, uh, looking at that, perhaps the president uh, has some connections there at the DEO to allow Lockwood in. Yeah, considering he uh, keeps changing his mind about that. Hmm. All right, so uh, that's uh, Crime and Punishment, the upcoming episode. Uh, looking forward to seeing that on April 21st. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Metropolis, Illinois is the place where the Superman celebration takes place uh, every June, the four-day Superman festival. Uh, plans for this year's festival are starting to take shape, and there's some rumors and speculation about who some of the special guests will be. But already announced is Tara Strong, who plays the, or was best known to Superman fans and comic book fans, as the voice of uh, Harley Quinn in the animated version. And she also plays Batgirl on the current DC Supergirl, uh, DC Superhero Girls um, animated shorts as well. And she will be a special guest at this year's Superman celebration. Uh, which will be kind of cool to have a voice actor. I don't think I can remember of a, a voice actor having been a special guest there before. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember that being on the uh, the docket either. She. Uh, I've been uh, just because I finished up with Titans. I've gone back and started watching Young Justice, the animated series from the first season, and she voiced a character named uh, Serling Ro uh, Ro Roquette. Mm -hmm. I believe that's how you pronounce that. And that I was kind of made up to see that because she was a Superboy supporting character in like the late 90s. Oh, wow. Uh, when he was hanging out at Cadmus. So if we're going to bring it back to Superman, I guess that's the closest. But yeah, she was, but she's been Batgirl a long time. She was Batgirl in the second when Batman the Animated Series went from Fox Kids to Kids WB. She took over the role as Batgirl and has done that, I think pretty consistently, mm. with a few exceptions. Mm. So uh, it's scheduled to take place across June 6th to June 9th at, uh, in Metropolis, Illinois, the Superman celebration. If you haven't been before, it's definitely a trip that you need to make. And um, sadly, I won't be able to get there this year. It was there last year. But um, I, you know, I, I really look forward to seeing all the things coming out of the Superman celebration. It's a really good time. Yes, always. Uh, I've never seen it where it doesn't look like there is at least some fun to be had. Mm. Now, also on the TV side of things, uh, Krypton Season 1 is now available on the DC Universe streaming service. And to make that announcement, DC released this video online earlier this week. Someone is coming to destroy Krypton. Because your grandson becomes Superman. Help me find a way to stop him. Krypton, your world is at an end. So that was a video that was released earlier this week to promote the fact that the first season of Krypton is now available on the DC Universe digital streaming service. And I know a lot of fans who uh, hadn't caught it on sci-fi at the time when it was first airing have started to uh, pick up on the episodes now uh, on their DC Universe subscription and are really impressed, as were we, when we watched it when it was released. Yeah, there's a different video uh, or a different commercial that played on the sci-fi channel last week. Okay because I was watching their Twilight Zone marathon, and they showed, uh, it was kind of a promo of the upcoming season, but also reminding you that it's now, the first season is now available on the DC app. Oh, wow. So uh, I was uh, I, I, th I was like, good, you know, let, let's get the word out there, because the DC app has, you know, really stepped up its game. And, you know, promoting that Krypton's on there, and that's a place you can go see it, would really kind of drive people towards... Uh, subscribing, I would think. Mm. 
So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to Season 2. Uh, I was really impressed with Season 1 and uh, with Doomsday and Zod now in power and Brainiac not done with uh, with uh, who we've got. Um, who else is coming on board? Uh, the main man is coming. Lobo. Lobo. So there's uh, quite a few things to look forward to in Season 2. Uh, interested to see what they do with some of these characters, especially Doomsday. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I may take a break with what I'm watching currently and try to get caught up with uh, Krypton before, but yeah, apparently now i got time because it's on the app. Yeah, and uh, you've kind of beat me to the, the finish line on Titans. I saw your comments on Facebook that you've now finished the first season uh, having mm-hmm. watched it on DC Universe and uh, had mixed feelings on it, but I think all in all, it kind of surprised you a little bit. You weren't expecting it to be, maybe be as enjoyable as you found it. I didn't expect to like anybody, I guess is the best thing to say. Uh, but it was really kind of funny because towards the end, while there were still like lots of decisions I wasn't really on board with, I ended up really like liking all four of the main characters uh, and Wonder Girl uh, when she popped in. Yeah. So it, I, I see why they ended the season where they did because it's a really good cliffhanger. Uh but now that I see everything all together, the Superboy thing at the end really doesn't fit in anywhere. Mm. Uh, un- un- unless that seems like something you do at the end of the first episode of the next season to kind of hint at things to come. But just it was it was a little weird um, where they placed it now that I see it in the context of the show. But, uh, I mean... I, I had a friend that I told that I was watching it, and she literally asked me, why are you doing that to yourself? So, uh, you know, opinions on this thing vary. <laughs> well, uh, I believe Doom Patrol is the next one you have to kind of pick up on. A lot of people are saying yeah, that. Quite I, good. Yeah, I'm taking a break from con- the contemporary stuff. I hear it's good, and I know that it's a little, it's a little more fun in mm. places than Titans, but I... I need a break after Titans from the live action stuff because Titans was heavy. Yeah. Titans Titans is like eating Thanksgiving dinner and then someone's like, Well, let's go and have a buffet somewhere and you're like, No, really, I'm full right now. It's okay. <laughs> no dessert for me. So, so uh, yeah, it's uh it's um it's great that people in the US have the D C Universe streaming service. Yeah, people in the comments on YouTube reminding me it's not outside of the U.S. I'm well aware of that. Uh, I feel your pain if you're not in the U.S. Uh, we're hoping that uh, sometime down the track that uh, the uh, similar service will be available outside of uh, people living in America. So we wait uh, for that. But thankfully, these shows are still being shown uh, on uh, cable TV. Uh, we have sci-fi here, so uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, channels here are what you know giving us the CW superhero shows. So we're not really missing out. We just can't really stream them unless you they bring them onto Netflix here, which they did with Teen Titans, which I've been able to. And I think Doom Patrol is also on Netflix here, mm-hmm. so you can, depending on what digital uh, subscriber service you have, you can watch these shows. But if you're a DC fan, obviously you'd hope for a, a DC Universe app uh, to be available outside of the US. For fans there as well. Now, Warner Brothers has always been shockingly bad about working out, trying to get their stuff across the pond. Apparently, you can get in the UK, you can get the first four seasons of the George Reeves Adventures of Superman TV show, but they never release seasons five and six hmm, over weird. there. Yeah, it's just like it's like why are you leaving money on the table, Warner Brothers? Seriously. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, the only other TV-related news we have, and um, it's been something we've been kind of following on the side for a little bit. Alison Mack, who played Chloe Sullivan on the Smallville TV series for 10 seasons, uh, has pleaded guilty in the ongoing court proceedings for her role in the uh, NXIVM sex cult. I don't know if that's a word you pronounce or if it's the letters you pronounce, but either way, um, (coughs) she has pleaded guilty and has admitted to two federal counts, one count of racketeering conspiracy and one count of racketeering, 
and all in all, she could see herself behind bars for up to 15 years. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing is just really sad mm. when you really look at it. Uh, Stephen Kirk, who uh, is part of the Super Friends of Metropolis on Facebook, and I've met him at met him at Metropolis when, when I was there, uh, did, wrote a really nice post uh, the other day basically saying that, you know, the, the perception that he keeps hearing, and I've heard the same thing, is that these Hollywood people are just freaks. And, you know, I, th- I think what that diminishes is uh, even though Allison Mack has pled guilty and even though she was part of this thing, she's probably also a victim uh, in, in, in all honesty. And if she's cooperating and she's pled guilty, that is probably meaning she's cooperating with investigations of other people. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the best thing, you know, that we can kind of do, uh, just as people <laughs> is just, you know, kind of leave her alone. Uh, and I know us talk, we're, we're talking about it because she was Chloe Sullivan for, for 10 seasons on Smallville. I don't think we're talking about it because it's, you know, there, there's kind of a salacious angle to it. I really don't care. There are some really disgusting comments from people uh, when everything kind of came out and now that she's pled guilty, it's just like, okay, it's time to let this kind of go, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. now that it's over basically. Indeed. And, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, there are so many different angles and, uh, so many different, you know, things that we don't know about this case. Uh, it, it, we don't know her exact role. We don't know how, you know, how much she knew or how much she was involved uh, things are coming out, and there are, you know, detailed articles like uh, on Hollywood Reporter, which we've referenced on our website. If you want to go into it, but uh, yeah, some of the comments and some of the remarks uh, that have been posted on social media are really in poor taste, and I've had to delete a couple of myself just because it's it's you know it's not the time for jokes and it's not the time for lewd comments. It's uh, you know there are people who are victims in this case. And it's not appropriate. Yeah, I, I I know that you know our our sometimes when there's like a horrific uh, event or you know somebody that you look at and I've looked at this for years in a really positive light, and suddenly it comes out that they did some really really dark things. That sometimes dark humor kind of helps you cope with that. Yeah, but it's just like. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of past that now, and now it's just trolls online wanting to be, trying to be funny. Mm, indeed. All right, well, let's take a quick break. We're at the halfway point of tonight's show. We're going to play some messages and then come on back on the other side of these messages to talk about comic books and some interesting news about the Walmart comics. So we'll be right back after these messages. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's SupermanHomePage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. SupermanHomePage.com. Covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. SupermanHomePage.com for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. SupermanHomePage.com Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I really appreciate it. I'm Matt Bomer, the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. When Lex Luthor unleashes his plan to destroy the world, you can be just like Superman. With a Superman Returns in Plato suit, you can pretend to have all the muscles of a man of steel. Then, strap on the punch and crush gloves to hear the sound of every punch you throw and everything you crush. In Plato's suit accessory, you put it together, batteries not included, punch and crush gloves, so 70. 
And when trouble hits the skies, you'll be ready with a Fight and Fly FX cape with real flying sounds. This cape responds to every move you make, whether you turn left or right to save the day. And we're back on WGBS TV Live, where we're going to go into the side of comic books. And DC Comics announced this past week that if you're a fan who's had trouble getting those 100 page giant comic books that they've been releasing in Walmart stores, or like me, you come from a country where they don't have Walmart stores, then you're in luck because DC have announced that they will be collecting these stories and publishing these stories that were exclusive to these Walmart publications in comic book stores. It will start off with uh, July 3rd's release of Superman Up in the Sky number one, collecting the story by Tom King with art by Andy Cuba and Sandra Hope. And that will then be followed by the Batman one on July 10th, a Wonder Woman one on July 17th, and then they'll cycle around again for Superman number two, uh, Superman Up in the Sky number two, and so on uh, in um, six issue monthly releases. A smart move. I mean, yeah. the, the, they're they're growing the Walmart program. Uh, I've seen Flash issues now. I've seen Wonder Woman issues. So they are kind of expanding what they're doing. But it only makes sense to try to grab another bite at the apple uh, for the people that, uh, you know, are the comic book store audience, basically, or, or get their books from Comixology. So it, it when, when this was announced... And we can go back to the tapes because uh, <laughs> we actually have tapes. Uh, well, actually, it's all digital, so it's 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 tapes. Uh, you know, I remember I remember people just winging out over the fact that you know these you know these books were only going to be available at Walmart, and you know no one else was going to get to read them. And you know, it, it, I've just gotten to the point where. I understand wanting to do something, but just because it's not available where you are does not mean that you're being wronged somehow. Mm. And I, and I kind of get the sense, you know, the little, same thing with the DC app that, uh, eventually it's going to come around and eventually DC is, you know, came around to publishing these for the direct market. And I'll be picking those up because I'll be honest, I stopped collecting the Walmart books because, Distribution was spotty. Yeah, and hard <laughs> to find some issues, I believe. I, I got I got issues one through four, and then issue five just did not exist yep. in my area, yep. and then issue six popped up. So, you know, I, I'd rather do it like this, where I can just read the story and be angry about it that way. <laughs> and let's be honest, DC are not going to leave money on the table. If there's a market there that they're not reaching, and not everybody has WalMarts, not everybody has access to them. Not everybody could pick up certain issues. They understand this. It's all about money. They're all about making money. So they're not going to leave a market untouched. Uh, so if there's a, 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 I think the plans always were somewhere down the line. Maybe it was a contractual thing with Walmart where a year after a comic book was released in Walmart, they would be able to digitally release it or publish it in another format elsewhere. And it was always going to happen. Yeah, and uh, Justin in the uh, chat says that it should have gone out to news agents where comics started. Problem is, Justin, here in the United States, uh, we call them newsstands, uh, but we don't we don't have those anymore. Mm. <laughs> they're they're gone. Okay, you know the the, the w Publix, which is a, a shopping center uh, chain here in the United States, and if you ever watched the first season of Superboy. And watch the scene where he rips, does the shirt rip while skateboarding because it was rad. Uh, there's a Publix in the background. That's the only reason I mention it. Uh, they were the last grocery store chain in this area that carried comics. Uh, and then after that, all they carry is the Archie Archie Digests at the at the uh, checkout lane. Mm. So we don't have news agents for them to, to carry it here. That distribution mo model has been gone for decades. So it's, <laughs> you know, Walmart was their best shot because Walmart, in the United States at least, uh, is uh, slowly taking the country over. Uh, and I welcome our Walmart overlords uh, for <laughs> when they finally get into power. 
And uh, I just want a cushy admin position. That's all I'm asking. Uh, so it was a it was a good idea in theory to do what they did. And you know they had that uh, thing at Target uh, with the DC Primal thing where they had a comic exclusively mm. there. So you know they're experimenting. They're experimenting in a way that they haven't for a very long time because everyone was so focused on the direct uh, you know distribution of the comic shop. Mm. So. You know, the fact that they're now going to the comic shops with this, and I'm sure it's going to be available in Comixology, which means you can probably get it all around the world. Yeah. You know, the bully for them. Get get as much get as much exposure as you possibly can, because then people might want to start buying comics again. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a, it was a great um, idea to put them in Walmart stores, being how prevalent they are there in the U.S., and... Uh, as I said, it was, I, I'm sure it was always the plan to put it to the direct market once uh, you know that had kind of run its course for those particular issues. So down the line, that was always going to be released. Just like they do with comic books, particular issues, they're always planning to put them in a trade down the line. So they're always going to milk their stories for as much as they can get out of them. And, and here's the other good thing about them that I like. It's a self-contained story for all of these characters. So if you don't want to jump into the Bendis run right now mm -hmm. and, and read like a year's worth of books to get caught up, you get a, a self-contained Superman story that's kind of in its own world. So that I, I, I don't see a problem with that. That DC has completely trashed the idea of one continuity. So you might as well, you know, <laughs> get on that bucking bronco and, and, and ride it and, you know, hang on for all you're worth because you're not going to get what it was 20 years ago. Mm. All right, in other comic book news, I keep hearing about this upcoming deceased uh, thing happening by Tom Taylor. And I'm a big fan of Tom Taylor's work, uh, not just because he's an Aussie, but because I've uh, enjoyed his work on what he did in Injustice. And, uh, he, you know, for him to be able to kind of take that step up, the another rung up the ladder to be able to do a DC-wide story like this, uh, kind of, you know, I tip my hat to him. But uh, Midtown Comics revealed their exclusive variant cover for uh, the upcoming DC number one by artist Inyuk Lee. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. But uh, this is the image, and it's a, I guess, a spin, a disturbing spin on the death of Superman scene where, you know, Lois is cradling a dying Clark Kent with the Superman, you know, cape flying in the background uh, from his uh, fight with Doomsday. Uh, this looks more like she's uh, attacked him or a vampire or something along those lines. But when you read what's happening in this uh, story, uh, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, I, I, you know, I really like that DC is being bold with this DC storyline and, you know, are going with something that is, you know, the darkest story you've ever read from DC Comics because, you know, we really haven't gotten that in the past couple of years, you know. <laughs> I, I look at this and I'm like, is this their move now? Is this the only thing they can do with these characters now? There's a, I think it's a Wonder Woman cover that's made to look like the, uh, or a Batman cover that's made to look like the the movie poster for A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep, there's another one. Where you have like this vamp for the Nun, the recent like uh, poster for yeah. that movie, The Nun, and I think there's one based on the poster for It. So yeah, they're mimicking yeah. some of the movie posters, but continue. So so that's fun. Yeah. You know, I, I get that, but I and, and and Brad in the flash chat asks if it's the DC version of Marvel Zombie. No, because Marvel Zombie was always a, an alternate universe to begin with. Mm. That wasn't like the mainstream Marvel universe going through a zombie apocalypse. But here's the thing: it looks like they're they're kind of trying to do both, like Blackest Night and Forever Evil again. Uh, just like kind of mashed up together. Mm, yeah. And, you know, it, it, if, if it's successful, great. If it's how they're making their money, fine. I am taking a hard pass on this. And, and that cover just had everything to do with it, really. 
Well, the uh, description on this is... Uh, Deceased Saga finds Earth inflicted by a mysterious techno-virus infecting 600 million people and turning them instantly into violent, monstrous, monstrous engines of destruction. The heroes of the DCU are caught completely unprepared for a pandemic of this magnitude and struggle to save their beloved, their loved ones first. But what happens to the world's greatest heroes if the world ends? And maybe this is like a, a, an alternate timeline where this happens, which is, again, fine. You know, that's great. Tom Taylor's the guy to go for that, uh, considering he, you know, made a pretty good living uh, doing the Injustice books for uh, for a long time. So that's great. It's just it, this is one of the first things since Rebirth that I'm like, no. Maybe when it's like four ninety nine on a Comixology sale, I'll pick it up and kind of read through it. But even then, it's just I don't need this anymore. <laughs> I don't need to see the darkest day of the DC universe. And and that is I want to make this completely clear. That is totally on me. Yeah. This isn't me complaining that DC's doing it because I think DC shouldn't do it. This is me saying as a reader, I'm just at that point where I'm nope. Yeah. Well, if you are interested in this, uh, it comes out, first issue comes out on Wednesday, May 1st, so uh, next month. So uh, I think I will be picking it up just to, to check it out, but uh, I'll let you know, Michael, if it's any good. Okay, Rick Lee James wins the internet today by, in the Flash chat, saying how many B in brains. That that was beautiful, Rick. I, I, am, I, I bow to you on that. That was funny. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's have a look at what comic books are available this week. And there's quite a few trade paperbacks and hardcovers to, uh, to mention this week. So checking them out, we have uh, Supergirl number 29 is available this week. And it also comes in this uh, variant cover, uh, which is uh, kind of cool. And uh, then we have Superman number 10. I think, sorry, I think that's uh, by Amanda Connor, that uh, cover, and she does some, some great artwork. Uh, Superman number 10 is also out this week, The Wrath of Jor-El, uh, and that is also available in this cool variant cover, uh, which is uh, making up part of the background of the Superman homepage at the moment. Uh, gives me a real Fleischer kind of feel, that, you know, where Superman's taking the, uh, I think it was... Uh, Billion Dollar Limited, one of those episodes of the Fleischer cartoons where he's dragging the train along the tracks. Um, so that is available this week. Also available, Wonder Twins number three. Say his name, Gleek. Gleek <laughs> takes front and center of this particular issue. And that is a uh, variant cover available for that comic book as well. Then in the trade paperback side of things, we have... Superman, sorry, Super Sons, um, Adventure of the Super Sons, Volume 1, Action Detective, trade paperback. We also have Michael, I'm guessing you're probably picking this up just because you grab everything that has the death of Superman involved with it. This is the Death and Return of Superman Omnibus, new edition. And the reason you should get it, I am not picking it up this week. I'll be getting it a little down the road when I can actually afford it, because this is what I'm going to have to save up for. This is the first collected version of The Death of Superman that actually has the gatefold in Superman 75. Because uh -huh. in the original issue on the last page, it, it went out to a triple-page spread. And Dan Jurgens for years, has... Uh, kind of lamented the fact that none of the collected editions do this. Uh, this thing is uh, also can serve as a, a load-bearing wall. Uh, if you're having some structural problems in your house, <laughs> you can just kind of put this against it, and that'll keep everything up. Yeah. This thing is gigantic. Jerry Ordway uh, posted a picture on Twitter of the copy he got, and I'm just like, you need a like you would need a spotter for this, is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't lift it alone. <laughs> All right, also about... And if you do drop it, remember to drop it away from you and back up, because <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. Also available this week is Elseworld Superman Volume 2 trade paperback, uh, collecting for the first time the Superman True Brit story, written by John Cleese. 
we also have JL uh, Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth hardcover, and then there is the Jimmy Olsen uh, Superman's Pal Jimmy Olsen by Jack Kirby trade paperback also available Ooh, this week. That's some good stuff. Have you ever read those? Some of them, yes. Those books are insane in all the right ways. They're, they're, he was just throwing things up against the wall. And if you are a fan of the post-crisis Superman and like things like Cadmus and Double X and the Guardian as a clone, this is where they got all of that. And I, I really recommend it as a fun read. Cool. So those are the comic books out this week, dated uh, Wednesday, April 10th. So... Uh... A few things to get there, uh, quite a bit uh, of reading material. All This week also saw the announcement, and this one caught a lot of attention from uh, Christopher Reeve Superman fans, and that is the announcement by Hallmark that uh, they'll be releasing this DC Comics Christopher Reeve as Superman musical ornament. It uh, You'll be able to hang it from your Christmas tree, uh, it looks like you'll also be able to stand it up if you don't want to hang it. And it uh, shows Christopher Reeve as Superman preparing to launch into flight, as seen in Superman the movie. And it also plays a clip of the triumphant John Williams composition, Superman theme. Battery operated, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. $20? I don't think they miniaturized John Williams and the London Symphony Orchestra and stuck them in the... Somehow, uh, no. No, I don't think so. But uh, $20 for this one comes out October 5th. Uh, You know, uh, I got to look at it because, you know, it it was all over social media for a little while. And I'm just like, that's that's nice. I I have a number of Superman ornaments. Mm -hmm, Me too. Uh, and, and And I like this one... Because it's musical in nature, uh, I and to me having a Superman movie ornament with the theme song playing really doesn't stand out at Christmas because the movie was released around Christmas time. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of put the two together, anyways. But yeah, it's you know just just anything that they can do with Christopher Reeve, uh, one will make money, and two is a really nice thing to see. Interesting that they chose to put the standard S rather than the movie accurate S on the chest. I wonder if that's a licensing issue. Mm. Interesting. I'm always wrong about that, but I'm going to ask the question anyways. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's the ornament available October 5th uh, from Hallmark.com if you want to check it out and put in your order for it. Uh, also, this week, I was brought, brought to my attention that Vision Express are now offering kids' spectacles, kids' glasses, uh, with DC Comics superhero designs. So you've got Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and uh, other characters of the Justice League. And here's the uh, look at the Superman uh, spectacles, Superman glasses. They have pretty much anything you can really see there. Is It's got the S on the arm uh, not uh, anything really that fancy but uh, I guess it's a blue and a red as well and uh, these are available from visionexpress.com it says check out the brand new range of children's glasses designed for any would-be Supergirl or Superboy you know what would have been funny is if they also had like an adult line where they had frames that are replicas of the various Clark Kent glasses <laughs> From all the media, like the the serial version and the George Reeves version, and the you know the Christopher Reeve had several different uh, yeah. glasses types and uh, Superboy. Uh, those I would look into. These, I mean, they're obviously designed for kids. And my head, they would never fit on my head. It would be probably one of the funniest things you ever saw. Uh, but you know, in terms of branding, yeah, it's a pretty smart move, DC. Mm. Yeah, indeed. Uh... Especially for the Superman Clark Kent side of things, that's you know for kids who have to wear glasses. You know, it was always for me when I, I was in high school and I needed glasses. I always loved doing the whole taking the glasses off thing when uh, you needed them. These days I wear contacts, but you know that kids who need glasses can have that connection to Superman, and he they can actually have Superman glasses. I had contacts for a year. It was terrible. Uh, I. Uh... 
You know when you go to the eye doctor and they put that little puff of air in your eye because yeah, they're I doing that. that test or whatever? I tell you about it. Okay. You're always ready for it, but it's just... <clears throat> I actually literally have to sit there and hold my eye open for it. Uh, contacts for me, I have this thing where something gets near my eye and, and my eyelid just starts <laughs> shaking shut. And they actually, because of my astigmatism, they had to put weights, like these three little small weights on the bottom of contacts, and I lost them. And I'm just like, you know, I just want to wake up in the morning, put on my glasses, and be able to see. <laughs> I'm yeah. good with that. So it's glasses for me, no matter how much they probably glare in the light every once in a while. Mm, okay, fair enough. Uh, uh contacts are the best thing I ever did but I guess it's different for everyone <laughs> but uh, yeah so there are uh, glasses for kids if you're uh, you know interested and have someone in your life that needs them uh, you know get to it now I just discovered that this one this morning and I don't eat at McDonald's uh, haven't can't remember the last time I had McDonald's but um, supposedly at the moment here in Australia and I'm guessing they probably had them a little bit earlier in, in the US with the release of Lego Movie 2, they've got these new Happy Meal toys and they pretty much look like a key ring or a keychain where it's uh, the heads of these characters, um, including Superman, and there's obviously Batman and Wonder Woman in there as well, as well as Emmett and the other main characters of the Lego Movie 2 uh, film. Uh, it uh, is a little kind of clasp thing that opens up and inside there's a unique mini game for each character you can use the little hook thing on top to hang it somewhere if you need it on your bag or on your keys or whatever uh, so these are available with happy meals right now and i believe the superman one is available this week so get to it if you're in australia and you like mcdonald's the good news is steve is that if you don't remember the last time you ate mcdonald's there is still probably a very good chance that that mcdonald's is still in you <laughs> uh, considering it's not real food, anyways. Great. So thanks for that. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying it's gross. It really is. <laughs> they had something like that. I don't know if they had a Superman one. Uh, I know they definitely had a Batman one. But yeah, they 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 had those at at the McDonald's here, uh, closer to when the movie was out. Mm -hmm. So they are available in Australia at the moment, and I've seen a couple of Australian fans posting these on Facebook uh, with the Superman one. So uh, I'm guessing that's what's available at the moment uh, if you're keen on picking it up. All right, well, uh, I guess we have time and uh, space on our... Um, yes, and Brad reminds me that here in Australia we call it Maccas. I know in America there was Mickey D's for a while, uh, like you know, the nicknames that people come up with. But yeah, we, here in Australia it's known as Maccas. I mean, it's McDonald's, but our nickname for it is Maccas. Okay, that's <laughs> that, yeah, it's an that's weird. Thing. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have time for this. Uh, this what is it? This week in history. So let me play your intro for you, and then you can go through some of the things that have happened in this week in the world of Superman over the last eighty years. Come with me now, my son, as we break through the bonds of your earthly confinement, traveling through time and space. Alrighty, we are going to jump up to 1959 for this one, where on the stands was Jimmy Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen number 37, which contained, in addition to a, the Elastic Lad of Metropolis, a story apparently where Jimmy gave Lucy Lane a uh, signal watch. Oh, wow. Uh, and also <laughs> Superboy number 73, which featured Super, Super Baby in Scotland Yard. The dog catcher of Smallville and Superboy's glass house, where he, you know, hurls insults at people, uh, <laughs> even though he is guilty of them as well. In 1969, you had Superman uh, number 217, which was an 80-page giant uh, with such stories as the Menace of Metallo and the Girl in Superman's Past. Uh, so, two very classic Superman stories, in my opinion. Uh, historically this week, back in 1979, the very first original comic book miniseries premiered at, from DC Comics. It's called The World of Krypton. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, it was kind of made to kind of cash in on the success of the movie. It was originally supposed to be part of the Showcase series, but then they decided to release it as its own 
uh, miniseries and thus launched the miniseries uh, in for DC Comics. Oh, cool. And uh, Superman Family number 196 also came out that year. 1989, this is another big one, and it's probably just for me. Action Comics Annual number two came out. The first appearance of the Eradicator uh, in comic books. This was near the end of the Exile storyline. George Perez joined the Superman crew uh, I remember reading that thing over and over and over again uh, when it came out. Uh, that that's, uh, man, I can go on about that all night, uh, but I won't. Uh, in 1999, Superman Adventures number 32 came out, as well as Superman: The Man of Steel number 89 and Young Justice number nine. And I only mentioned Young Justice because now you know I'm kind of watching the cartoon. And then in 2009, jumping all the way to uh, to just 10 years ago, Superman World of New Krypton number two came out this week mm. as that storyline went on um, pretty much interminably, I believe it was. That thing seemed to last a lot longer than it needed to. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm going to be honest, it's weird. That's like some of the few Superman comics of the past 30 years that I didn't finish. Uh, I still haven't finished that story. I have no idea why. Uh, I just haven't found the time yet. Uh, and in the real world, Russell Crowe, Jor-El of Superman's, uh, of, in 2013's Man of Steel movie, uh, was born in Wellington, New Zealand. On April 8th, Jack O'Halloran was born. He was not in Superman the movie and Superman 2. Uh, John Schneider was born on April 8th as well. He was Jonathan Kent. And on April 10th, Shyler Lee Potts, Alex Danvers, uh, in the 2015 Supergirl TV series, was born in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1982. Wow. God, I'm old. <laughs> there you <sighs> go. I didn't know that one. I Is that on my calendar? That's on the calendar. Oh, yeah, wow. you put it on there. I haven't. Even, I, I would hope you did. Yes. No, I did. But it's, uh, I've got a calendar on my computer, and then there's a calendar on the website, and obviously then I haven't uh. meshed them together. So there you go, uh, 1982. So uh, wow, she's what's that? Make her 36, 37? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, she's, I do she's like looking it. good for her age. <laughs> I'll give her that. <laughs> So there you have it. Uh, that is the week that was in the world of Superman. Well, it pretty much brings us to the end of tonight's show, and uh, we've uh, had a lot to talk about, but uh, it's been good to be able to get through that all. Now, before we do sign off for tonight's show, I'd like to thank everyone who watched tonight's show through YouTube. I appreciate you being part of the episode and all the people commenting through YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in live. Uh, we know people lead busy lives, and the, the fact that we're getting people from the U.S., from Egypt, from Australia, who are all tuning in across different days, different times, uh, it's really impressive. So we really thank you. And to our sponsor and patron, Douglas Meacham, really appreciate his support. And if you want to sponsor the Superman homepage, don't forget you can do that. For simply, You simply have to go to patreon.com slash superman homepage where you too can be a sponsor for as little as $3. And I want to thank you, my co-host, Mr. Michael Bailey. Thanks, Mike. 